How the hell are you? Good. Nice to see you again. Guess what? We had a very special treat this past Thursday on Jedi Council. SNL alum Bobby Moynihan is here, and he. we were talking on Jedi Council, and we were just trying to talk about Last Jedi without spoiling it because the movie hadn't come out yet. But now the movie has come out. You guys are have hopefully seen it, otherwise you wouldn't have talked about this. We've had some spoiler videos on the channel, but we really wanted to get Bobby's thoughts on the movie and Ashley's thoughts on the movie because they had a, they have more of an opportunity here to, to kind of go in depth. So just for a little bit, this is a very special treat. We're going to get some of the um, overall thoughts on the film. Bobby, the first thing I got to ask you, though, on, on Council, you had mentioned that there was one particular character that you wanted to see a whole movie on, but you didn't want to mention because you didn't want to spoil it. Yeah. Which character was that? Um, the guy who puts the coins inside, <laughs> uh, inside of uh, BB-8. Which, which, <laughs> which I like have that. heard a rumor that that is actually voiced by Mark Hamill. I have to confirm oh, it. Oh, I yeah. hope so. I have yeah. to confirm that, but I, 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 have, we have a pretty I, good source. That I, said I, that. I think it, it was yeah. him. Yeah, but it, it's yeah that character is Oh, amazing. that's yeah. dope. Now that's, that's yeah. even... Now now I'm now I was doing it as a joke. Now I kind of do like <laughs> now that. You really want, now your fan fiction has more meaning. Oh uh, yeah, the, I'm a, yeah, the I'm a, drunk oh, little creature. Uh, what did you think of that oh, Canto so Bite stuff overall? Because I know <laughs> that's you didn't, weirdly so cool. It, I'm yeah, weirdly yeah. blown away by yeah. that. I yeah. love the idea it's, that he's someone else in yeah. the universe. Well, he's also. done it twice. He's also done and he's also done it in the Clone. Did you watch the Clone Wars? Oh uh, yeah, of course. So the Clone Wars, the Clone Wars series at the in the sixth season when Yoda goes in and sees Darth Bane, mm -hmm. he's Darth Bane. Shut Mark up. Hamill, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, um, okay, so let's talk about, first of all, let's get into the things that we've addressed here. How did you guys feel? Because we'll start with stuff maybe that we didn't like, and mm -hmm. we wonder if you guys liked it. The Canto Bite stuff, the Casino Plan and stuff. I'm not a big fan of the Benicio Del Toro character, the way that he, that he shows up, and he's got that stutter. I, could, I, liked this, I liked what he did in the second half because I thought his message really pertained to what Finn was going through, so I understood why he was there. But I was disappointed by the execution of that particular character. But Bobby, I'll start with you. The Canto Bite stuff felt like a different movie to me. Like it felt like a Harry Potter movie. Yeah, well, it's it's weird. I uh, I think this is the first Star Wars movie where they jump around so much in time, even too. Yeah. Like they're like usually it's just those wipes, and we're now at a different place, but it's the exact same time. And that's not the case for, for this movie, which is interesting and new and wonderful. But that Canto Bite stuff. I also, it, it's so hard with the marketing and being a fan and like the, the, the Vanity Fair shoots, I yeah. think also mm -hmm. do such a, not disservice to it. Like it's like, it's amazing to see all that stuff and you get to whatever, but when you see these glossy pictures of 30 brand new Star Wars characters and you're a fan of not only the universe itself, but like I'm, I'm, I'm super into like the way they make the costumes and the way they make the creatures and, and, and all that stuff. And you see all these amazing things and you have months to go, oh, I can't wait to see that. And like yeah. even the day before I saw the uh, just a tweet of someone asking if this creature was based on Carrie Fisher's dog, Gary. Right. <laughs> and like I was like waiting to see that. And like and then the movie happens. and You're like, what happened to all those guys? Yeah. Right. Like, right. It just goes by so fast. It's like a little bit, too, in the cantina, the new Maz Kanata's castle scene in Force Awakens, I felt a little bit like, well, but, 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 but slow down, slow down, slow down. Yeah. Like that big guy in the chair. Oh, yeah, who's that guy? Dude, Grum yeah, 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 like, yeah, right. Grum yeah, I want to see more, that yeah. dude a bunch. Like, right. like some of the, some of that yeah. stuff, like I, like I I had a problem with that as far as they just, they, they blow through it too quickly. I also like love the idea of like how the rich live in the Star Wars universe, but it did seem... That was the one that just. If he off. didn't have it, it would be okay. It right. felt like it was just like you know what it reminded me of the weird uh, uh, lizard riding the lizard Obi Wan riding riding yeah. the lizard scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah it, like it was just like all right. This it had thing. a prequel. It had a prequel. Out, feel they to figured it, out yeah. how to make a guy ride a lizard, so yeah. they're doing that now. But I think yeah. that was the one time throughout the movie. I mean, look, every Star Wars movie has a lot of CGI, but it's the CGI that that when it pops out, it goes, oh, that's that doesn't seem real. That's the stuff that I say, uh, do we should we maybe did we need that? Did, how did you feel about Canto Bite? I was a little bummed out about it just because there was so much hype about this location that we hadn't seen yet. And then the book came out like right before and I read about half of it and I was like, yes, this is like this glitzy glam Vegas. And then there's like 
the one shot of Canto Bite where you're like, yes, we're here, and then we're not here anymore. Right. But I will say what I did like about that whole sequence was like, in The Force Awakens and in the other Star Wars movies, you have these, these plans that always go like swimmingly or there's a trap. It's like right. one or the other and it's nothing in between. And what I liked about this is they made this plan that was just kind of bad and didn't work out. Yeah. And it was kind of nice to see that actually happen for once. That's a great point. I mean, it, there's it, things didn't always go the way you thought they were going to go in this movie where you say like, oh, okay, well, is going to wind up... Yeah, he turned against them, but he's going to wind up. That's him in the in the ATST. But I actually didn't love that it was BB-8 that was in that. I think right. it could have been Ray or somebody else that would have been interesting. Yeah. But the fact that it wasn't Benicio, I, I liked because it wasn't predictable. There were a lot of things in this movie that weren't predictable. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I yeah. agree. Well, <laughs> well, that's that's what I was going to ask you. So, Bobby, give me some of the things that you really liked that you want to get off your chest about, or maybe there's some stuff you didn't like. Whatever it was, floor is yours. Um. It feels like we keep talking now that we can talk about spoilers it, or whatever. It, it, yep. We keep saying it felt like a different movie. It felt yep. like like whatever, but I think like they did a really smart thing where like they kind of fed into the like who were raised parents thing, and they kind of fed into like all the things that we thought were going Snoke to be theories. Um, revealed. Yep. Snoke theories, like you know, like they they even I would go as far as saying built it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like on purpose, like they the marketing <laughs> genius, yeah. like Andy Serkis going in and being like, he's the most, he's more powerful than Vader and the Emperor together. I'm like, I can't wait. And then you see the movie and you're like, oh, boy, like, <laughs> right, right, like, right. It's, it's, it's crazy what happens. But there was a lot of that. And like, that's what I, I think when I, I, I saw Ashley right after uh, I saw the movie, and I was like a little angry. I was like yeah, a little confused. Yeah, you were not having it. I, I was not. I was confused and angry. And <laughs> what were you? What I don't were you know angry why. About? I don't okay. know why. That, but that's because you I, looked concerned. I was, I was like, oh my gosh. Concerned for the movie. <laughs> or concerned for Bobby. Concerned for Bobby. Oh <laughs> um, no! But like, but like, I had just seen it, and then yeah. like, and I think now what what I was really confused about is the the theme or the tone of the movie like all the movies are like there's this death star and we got to destroy it and we did it and we're all yeah. heroes right. and here was our journey and this movie essentially went this movie was like a movie about retreat yeah at the end and how it's okay to retreat and like that to me is insane like a war movie like where the culmination the final thing is like hey you can't win them all. You just have to keep <laughs> fighting. And it's like, especially in the, I'm not very political, but like in the times we're in now and, right. and on all that stuff. And the way the movie ends, it felt like the Star Wars universe or corporation in, in, mm -hmm. in a sense going like a little bit going like, hey, nerds, we know you're going to watch all this stuff. <laughs> we know you, we know you eat all this stuff up and we're just trying to surprise you guys. We're just yeah. trying to make this we know that we have to make good movies, but we also know what we have here, which is this juggernaut of a of a of a thing. So it to me, it felt like they went, "Hey, man, anything can happen. Yeah. It's not always we're not always going to do exactly what you thought we were going to do, and this is what we're about, and this is where we're headed in the new stuff." And I went like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm down." Like, yeah. I think there's some this this turn of fandom, and me as a huge Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire fan, like when that show comes on and Lost did it uh, first, where it's like this conversation of what's this this theories and everything, but also Game of Thrones setting the tone of, "Hey, anything can happen. Anyone can go." That's the story, story George R. R. Martin was telling. Star Wars has to meet that a little bit, and this is why I couldn't going into this had trouble predicting the ending, and and now I can't predict nine. It's like they were like, "Don't worry about it." We'll get there. That I think that was my biggest thing with Ashley was I was like, what are, the, what are we gonna do now? Like, what, yeah. what yeah. did they leave JJ with? Like, you know, yeah. and like, complete spoilers were allowed. Oh to yeah, say. Yes, whatever sir. you want. We lost so many amazing characters in this movie. <laughs> I mean, can we can, we, can we pour one out for Akbar? Yeah. Justice, the, <laughs> the most like it really upsets me that we didn't get even a shot. Yeah, my my shitty. Oh god, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my uh, oh, this one's not Verizon. Yeah, right. my um, <laughs> my pitch. If I was still on SNL, like if I was, that's why I should never direct a movie. Would have Akbar go. 
It's a oh crap! And then blow. <laughs> well, see that whole <laughs> that's, that, that's what I would do. And, but that whole and scene, I think though. it would fit in this movie. There's enough comedy. Like yeah, really. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't love Poe saying big ass door and big that kind door. of thing. Like that was weird. Hearing yeah. the word ass. Yeah, yeah I didn't Star like that. Wars movie yeah. super weird. I didn't like that. Somebody like else pointed out to me, or someone said, I don't know where I read it, uh, that this is the first Star Wars movie in history yeah. where paper is used because oh. they had physical books yes yes and they were yeah. like we've never seen paper yeah, in the right. star wars universe and i was like that's see amazing and then you get the end with the little broom i'm like get on a broom now broom kid. yeah we like to call him broom kid, <laughs> broom kid. Um, Lord, but that's you know, gonna be yeah well you know, first of all to answer your first question talk about <laughs> theories though with the the first thing was that what the hell are we gonna do because that's how, that's how i felt on saturday when i saw it the first time right and then after watching it a second time i think it brilliantly sets up nine it's funny because i didn't see any of it because you've got Kylo Ren now is the supreme leader. Question is that we hear in that flashback that Kylo Ren has had stolen some of the Jedi from when he blew when he got rid of when he killed all the temple. He stole from. We assume that's the Knights of Ren. We didn't see any of them in this movie. So will he have an apprentice? Because Snoke had an apprentice. Um, the Emperor had an apprentice. Every supreme ruler has had an apprentice. So will we see that? Will we? What? How many years will it take place afterwards? I still think that Leia should be, uh, they should handle her. Like, the question is how they're going to handle her now. The way that they set this movie up at the end is they can set it up to where she has passed on and now the resistance needs to go, but you got to do more of Luke as a force ghost. You can't recast her now. Mm -hmm. I just think that you, that you could have done it if she had more of a prominent role or a role, excuse me, I shouldn't say prominent, I said more of a role to where it was like, well, what are you going to do now with her? Because she hands it off to Poe. She goes, what are you looking at me for? Follow him. That's pretty much saying that's your that's your new leader. He's going to be taking care of the resistance. The new cast is taking over. Ray is the new mm -hmm. Jedi. Um, and when and we've got and Finn has a, a bigger role. Now the Akbar scene, um, the thing that I think that, that plays into a bigger problem I had because I want to get your thoughts on this. It lends itself to that whole Leia scene, force flying. Um, I didn't like that scene at all because I think you could have done the same thing. What well, you could have done with that part and including Akbar. Same thing. Kylo Ren comes flying through. He's about to blow him up. His boys blow it up. But then they go flying into space. It pretty much what happened in Spider-Man Homecoming. Everything kind of comes down on them. They're all dead. She's under rebel, rubble. Rebel. Is rebel, rebel. <laughs> under rubble. And then as she's out and it looks like she's dead, then it's picks it up with her hand, the music starts, and then she just, the air starts to go out of the out of the room, and then they rescue her. You could have had the same impact without her floating around in space, and then she does the flying, like you say, Wicked Witch of the West, and it goes, yeah. I don't know, but what do you think about that, that scene? All right. Yeah. <laughs> I love when Bobby stirs. He gets ready. He, he, gets, he gets ready. Because, I, because for the past three days, I've been silently in my garage <laughs> thinking about this. Um, in in the phone, Helena. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a, side, a little sidebar here. Taryn Killam got me the uh, la the drivable land speeder for children. Yes, that's amazing. For my daughter. My daughter's five months old. She won't for, be able to fit in this for yeah. a long time. <laughs> and I just put it together. Yeah. <laughs> it's in my garage, and I just look at it and go, I wish I was tiny. Yeah. Um, it's pretty great. Um, that scene to me will always be perfect in in no. the sense of that's what you that's what you go to those movies for. To me, is to sit there when they when that happens. First of all. Oh God, I'm such a, I can't keep my mind in thought. When he is about to do it, and you saw that in the trailer, yeah. I was like, they showed this in the fucking trailer? Yeah, like, yeah. so mad. And then when those two ships come out of nowhere, I, first of all, I want, want to see books on just those two guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or a scene where Kylo's just like, dude! Dude! <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> dude. But when that first happens, and the way it's done, the way that it's edited, and the way that Ryan Johnson does it, She's out, and then it's just General Hux, who is now a complete buffoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still liked him in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Jesus, yeah. man, that's a he was Hitler in the first movie. Right, and right, in this right, movie, right. he was Buddy Hackett. Like, right. <laughs> like, but uh, the way that all of a sudden they're just like Hux is just talking, and you're just like, why? What? Why are you talking? Like, why is anything happening? Why are they moving on from this so quickly? And then all of a sudden you're there and you see it and it's that you have it, it, it timing wise. It's like the best thing in any Star Wars movie to me is it's like the reveal of, of Luke's father. I think it's up mm, there with that wow. mm -hmm. because you're just like, is it crazy? Yeah. 
Is yeah. it is it bonkers? Yeah. Do I want an entire movie explaining just that m moment? Yeah, because. But sitting there and watching it, like I was, I was completely taken away. I also like Carrie Fisher, like just in my life, like I love her, like mm -hmm. everything about her, I think is wonderful. The fact that she wasn't all there and, st and was an advocate. Did you get a chance of, to of, meet her? Or? I did, and it was yeah. one of the greatest moments of my life. Yeah. Uh, I think back, I'm gonna start tearing up. I mm -hmm. think uh, I met her at that um, the Force Awakens panel at Comic Con, and then got to go to the concert afterwards, oh, where. Right. Where they played the score, and and I had a wonderful conversation with her. I have a picture of me, her, and Gary, where she's kissing me and touching my beard. It's my favorite thing in the world. Yeah. And this is a weird, just Bobby Moynihan side note, but I, the day my daughter was born, my wife, kind of the night before, was like, I think something's happening. I'm not sure. You, I mean, you have kids. You yeah. know what it's like yeah. when you're waiting. My first kid, you're waiting. You have no idea what's gonna happen. You're terrified. And like the night before, she was like, I think I'm feeling something and like was like, all right. Like, and so we, we were just up for 25 hours straight, which is what you're not supposed to do. Right. And I just, I, I'm used to that from SNL. I'm used to, I was, it was nine o'clock in the morning. I hadn't slept in like 27 hours. And I looked at my wife and I was like, I need to take a nap because I think this is going to happen soon. Mm -hmm. And I need to, I just need two hours. You need to be ready. To, to yeah. whatever. I took a two hour nap and I remember waking up from it and, and feeling like, it was a brand new day. Like, it's like all of a sudden, all that anxiety went away. And the second I woke up, I looked at my phone and it was that video that they put out, like the pre-trailer that was just footage from Last Jedi. Yeah. And it's beautiful. It's so well done. And that last thing in it is Carrie Fisher saying it's about family. Yeah. And then her kind of saluting. And I just burst into tears. I was about to have a daughter. Mm. And the second I started crying, I went like, it's gonna be all right. And my wife just opened the door and went like, it's happening. Oh, and from wow. that Ooh, second man. on, like two, three hours later, I was holding my baby. Wow. Like we, it was one of those things where we ran to the hospital, we got wow. there just in time, and like she went through labor for, like, well, whatever. Wow. Yeah, but still. Shouldn't be yeah. saying all this stuff. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, but Carrie Fisher is someone, in, I, I, I'm a person who tends to, I like the, the, weirdness of life and mm -hmm. these little things that happen and Carrie Fisher is just somebody who I, I loved her one woman show I've loved her yeah. my love, love her books and uh I do feel like in a weird way like a connection to her yeah. like yeah. Uh, everyone does who 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 knows that character and stuff but being able to meet her and and and, and doing all this stuff and that moment is absolutely Beautiful. Well, do you I think, think that add that because of your connection with her, and obviously the, the moment that you got to to meet her, and and obviously the story you just told there, do you think that 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 added to that scene, that the emotion to it? It your was all experience? emotion. I mean, there's yeah. so much to take in, and then like you also, I probably even had a moment where I'm like, I'm in a little Star Wars movie, and I'm crying. I'm yeah. 40 years old, but like it's just to see her face and the eyes open, and you go like, there's a tiny, tiny part of me that was like. Carrie Fisher might actually pull that off like in real life. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like she's so, she's such a wonderful, beautiful, insane, damaged, did her things, yeah. like, you know, but also just such a wonderful, a collector. Like, you know what I mean? Her mother's was a huge collector and yeah. all that stuff, like yeah. that family. Like, she's just such a wonderful person. It was just so much hope and so much, want, like, I went like, I, I loved it. But then I, I also went, I have a, a huge question, which was, there's like they make it a point in the in the prequel movies to have Hayden Chris Anakin Skywalker go like the only reason I am going to the dark side is because I want the power to bring people back right. to life right. and like that's mm -hmm. like to me that's what like got people to go to like the dark side yeah. almost was like and, and maybe I'm I'm just viewing it or thinking of it wrong but it was such a huge thing was like you once you have that power you are the most uh, powerful being in this universe. Yeah. If you can actually give and take life and or give back life, mm -hmm. anyone can take it, but like give back. So to have her do that, I went like, so wait a minute. <laughs> Is this just a cool, awesome scene that you guys thought of? Or are you telling us that Leia all along <laughs> was the one yeah. who was the most powerful, should have brought balance to the force and done all this like is she the most powerful being in this universe now because she was frozen in space woke up and brought herself back to life right. and then flew yeah right 
Well, I know where you're well, going. Well, yeah, yeah, I think you and I are going. I know where you're it, going. It, 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 th that is something that's been kind of revealed in new canon that that Yoda felt that was the case that he wanted to train Leia. He and the Ghost Obi Wan have a conversation uh, where Yoda's like, "I'm ready to train her," and Obi Wan says, "No, Luke." So I think you're right. I think that's dope. And like, yeah. <laughs> I used to think I I think I used to be somebody who wanted a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah. I'm a gigantic Lost fan, mm -hmm. and I'm someone who loved Lost, even the ending. I don't. I think now I'm someone who almost doesn't want stuff answered. Yeah. I love the idea that it's quite possible <laughs> that yeah. all of these movies are all for naught and that the Skywalker line <laughs> is just a whiny <laughs> bunch of guys yeah. from his dad on, yeah. just these wimps. The yeah. males in the Star Wars are just wimps. And Leia was like, I had it the whole time, man, but I was too busy... Yeah. Correcting everything else right. instead of your magical Jedi stuff, but I can also do that too. I can too. do that too. Like, yeah. and there's definitely this feeling in the world right now, which we need of this new way of thinking, which is like women are women can do like the Haldo and that like the, it's yeah. it's so amazing. But I just I love the idea that like yeah she's the most powerful it, it, being in this thing. She could she could, she was the one that could have done everything. Well, look, there was certainly a yeah. possibility that that was going to be where they were going to go with nine, but we know yeah. that. Speaking about powerful women, you've got Ray, who is going to be leading this charge of Jedi. Now, whether or not she trains Broom Kid or not, we'll figure it out. But um, do you, what do you think, though, the way that that was all set up with? Do you think that because this is what, my, what I've been saying, I think because episode seven, they killed Han, episode eight, they killed Luke, and I think nine was supposed to be Leia's kind of swan song, but unfortunately, it right. didn't happen. So I think Luke will have a more, I will have a bigger role in nine as a, as, Force vision for for Ray. How are you feeling about that, it? Kind that of was my up? immediate thought because Kathleen Kennedy had said that episode nine would have been you know Leia's mm -hmm. movie, Carrie Fisher's movie. So I, I think that if they weren't going to bring Luke back as a Force ghost or or Vision or whatever, they're, I think they're definitely going to do it now. You have to, you they have, have to. to because there's no there's no other big there's no other original trilogy. We still haven't seen Lando. We, we can bring Porkins back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm available. Um, Which, you know of, what? Like grandson of Porkins. Oh, God. Tommy Porkins? Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> Tommy P. Yeah. I, actually, I, something I want to ask you on the regular council, too. If you had a shot to be, because I have my opinions on it, if you had a chance of, like, next time you went into <laughs> Bad Robot and JJ said, hey, Bobby, you want to be in episode nine, would you do it? Yeah. You would do it. Yeah, See, I, I'm always do. confused whether no. or not. <laughs> See, I feel like I would say no. Why? Why? Because I don't want to see. Because I don't want to see what's going on. Oh, you yeah. don't want to be spoiled. Yet. I don't want to see what's going on. I don't want to because it would be really cool to be. Maybe I'd be I, like, eh, spoil this one. There's gonna be 50 more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah you're yeah. right. Yeah. Maybe it's like you sh you show up as like a. It's like if it's a stormtrooper, it's somebody else too. Or you, but or, after seeing this movie, I would be very weary or very very careful after seeing what Benicio del Toro. I, Benicio del Toro, good guy, man. I'm sure he's a great guy. Yeah. I was not a didn't do it. For it. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know why. I, don't I know think why. it's gonna be a lot of. I, I it was, was a very Lando-ish character to me. A very like, okay, this guy pops in, but the way that everything went down, I went like, all right, like plot wise, that was fine. The little stutter did bother me, but that's just a weird acting. Thing. I didn't like, like it. Either. I'm not. I'm not like a huge fan of A-listers popping up in in Star Wars movies. It kind of takes me out of it for Even a minute. Justin, that was Justin Thoreau. It, it was yeah. Justin Thoreau. It was, like, like, <laughs> it was a ran that that scene was very random to me, especially the oh my it, lovely. It was yeah, and I'm like, is that Justin Thoreau? That whole thing reeked <laughs> yeah. to me of I would love to I I would love to go and ask somebody and it's like we cut out most of the Canto Bite stuff like last <laughs> like two months before like you know what I mean yeah. or something because like it just seemed. Like they did a lot more yeah. and it didn't make it, but I, I got confused and like so can I can I ask a question? Because yeah. I'm a little ignorant to it. It says like he's the character's name is DJ. That's yeah. what they called him, but it's a nameless character. Right. And they're like, we're but gonna find the out figure, more. It says DJ and then in parentheses Canto Bite. Right. Has do you have do you know any information of what about those him? letters stand for? No, no, no. no. They haven't, they haven't, has, no. has anything been revealed? Not yet. They, they Not acted yet. like that maybe, was going to be a big reveal in the movie or something. And it wasn't yeah. at all. People were well, saying Dark Jedi. People were saying like maybe it was Ezra, Ezra. from Rebels. Oh yeah. Like, but it was nothing of that. And that that goes back to Bobby's point. I think earlier is that they were playing with any theory. And I think this is in general with with the new Star Wars. Any theory that you think you have, throw it out the window yeah. because it's never going to come true, right. no matter what it is. I disagree. I have a theory. What's what do you got? Theory? I have a theory for nine that I think is going to happen, but it's just, I don't, I, I'm, t t tell me if I'm insane. I'll be the judge of this. There was so much um, pomp and circumstance over uh, uh, Ray's parents. Right. And this movie essentially went like, 
It don't matter. Like, you know, like, it, yeah. like that, it, that, like, you know, They're it's nobody. not going to change it either way. But they did a little misdirect of seeing, it mm -hmm. looks like two parents are coming. Right. And it looks like the two parents, to me, I was like, not only specifically are they Han and Leia, but they are specifically in their outfits from, <laughs> from Force Awakens. Like, I, yeah. I thought it was like a little purple, and I was like, are they really about to do this? Like, are we, are, like, and it was just that. And then it's the misdirect. Yeah. Is there a world where Rey finds out in episode nine that her parents were Han and Leia and that that's her brother and that he just lied to her and did all this and also a misdirect for the fans also and they go and the big reveal is in nine where it's like Han and Leia were your parents, you were my, that was your brother, you and... You could say anything to me, and I'd be like, maybe. Yeah, I guess. I, guess. I don't know. So I, crazy. Thought, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I watch too much reality TV and, like, <laughs> no, it's, and it's not, no. judge the editing. Where it's I, like, I'm like, that seemed like the could, way they did it to me seemed like that's a scene where you go back and go, oh, they were, they were walking up. Like, like I don't, I don't know. To I, me, I, I went like that's a lot my of theory conspiracy on theorists it. are gonna are gonna look at Kylo and say he's lying to her, whether or not it's on or not. I think you're right. You think he's I, lying, right? I, I well, no, I think he's. I think that the again, I talked about Force Awakens is about identity. Jet Last Jedi is about choices, and I think Ray's lesson from Maz Kanata was your identity isn't behind you; it's in front of you. Don't worry about the past. And I think they'll they'll stick. Kylo pretty stick much with says that. the same thing. Kylo's the yeah. stick with thing. Uh, but to your theory, there was just enough of uh, barely uh, there was some romantic tension between Ray and Kylo to make me think that your theory is right well, <laughs> that they are related. Well, that, that Star Wars will play with that. But I actually <laughs> think that they're. That it's funny though because. I like also to think that in if if that is true that the rancor keeper is raised, <laughs> <laughs> but I I I am with you where yeah. I think that that was kind of the point of what Ryan Johnson was trying to say is that this is about race choices this is about Ray she wanted to be someone I thought that was so beautifully done where mm -hmm. Kylo was telling her in that throne room like stop you've been chasing this she wanted it to be Han you, you, you wanted it to be Luke and basically telling the audience you wanted it to be Han you yeah. wanted it to be Luke you wanted it's, it to be Palpatine it's, no, Kenobi, it's it, nobody yeah. and you Kidster. it's you be you do your things like you're there nobody's where do you fit in the story yeah. but you fit somewhere to me is what he's what he says to her and I I don't think it's a crazy theory I think that it's it's certainly possible and it's a good way for them to do maybe that they, that Vader I am I am your father moment in nine by saying no wait a minute because JJ if he wanted to could do that because yeah. I also am very curious to what JJ and Ryan like how they collaborated in this if anything because I think that JJ set it up and then maybe I'm very curious if JJ was watching going well what the hell that's not where I was going to go with this thing right. and then and then because he didn't have he wasn't going to have it back and then maybe that was point of, maybe he had he read the script and then when they offered it to him maybe that was maybe because remember he didn't want to do it he yeah. didn't want to do nine he well he, when they initially I got to interview him for Force Awakens and he seemed like I'm good. I'm just. I, I started yeah. here because I thought he would maybe want to do a television series. Yeah. He's like, I'm good. Uh, I, it's it's up to them to do whatever they want. I'll always be around to, to help. And then Ryan Johnson does his thing. They get rid of Trevorrow. I think that after reading that script and seeing it, he was gonna. He. I mean, mm. you're, you're shaking your head like you know something. I was in Book of Henry, the mm. movie yes. that Con Trevorrow yeah. directed, yes. uh, uh, and we talked about it a great deal. I mean, like we're both big fans. One of the mm. reasons why I think he put me in the movie was because we hit it off talking about that I introduced him to Daisy Ridley at, a, at the SNL after party it was the first time they oh, had wow. met oh, wow. and saw a moment where she went what happens to me and he went you want to do this now <laughs> and she said yeah and they went off into a corner of the bar and he whispered into her ear and like she started crying and I was like I'm witnessing Star Wars history wow. right now wow. and I remember being like so amazed and feeling so wonderful and so happy for Colin because he's such a fan I haven't spoken to him since, but like the since mm. the, the news came out, yeah. he's not doing it. But like it, it kills me just because like someone, mm. you know, I would have loved to have seen what he had done with it. I think he was very very passionate. But JJ's, JJ yeah. man, right. he, he he he's the reason a lot of this stuff is being done. Yeah, oh, absolutely. In, in and I think he'll seeing how excited he was again about coming back to these characters and doing that. And I also like the idea of like, Force Awakens was great. This felt like. This whole movie felt like a trailer for whatever Ryan Johnson's going to do next, and I'm pleased with it. Yeah, yes. you're so about right. It, and yeah. it was great, and it's this new thing. My all the comedy in it, great. I'm the, which one? Yeah, which, which is one? the one? Which, one? which was the one? I don't know why. And may, I need to see it again. Lightsaber. 
Oh, that. I, I, yeah, we've, some, it just bothered me a tiny bit. Is it more, a, my buddy had said it felt more like Mark Hamill than it did Luke. Is that what it was? Mark Hamill's the best. Yeah. He can do no wrong right. in my mind. But this is a very, um, I think, like, brush your shoulders off Jay-Z, and I think of, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, doing it like you got to look cool when you're doing it. Right. If you're going to pull this move, unless you're President Obama who can do it, like, a little uh -huh. proper... Uh, maybe I'm just being whatever, but like Mark Hamill, very not coolly, <laughs> <he> was <laughs> like that. I also think the tiny little thing of just something on him or something burning on him and him just being like, like maybe what if <laughs> or something like he was yeah. physically doing it for a reason rather than just being like a cool ha. cinematic moment. I'm not even here. That yeah. a tiny bit, maybe maybe it'll grow on. That was one. Like see that, that one. That one. This, yeah. Kind of killed me. That I'm yeah. all oh, for. Oh, that made me laugh. I am all for setting up the most thing and then just flippantly. <laughs> uh, I thought point. that was brilliant. It goes back to your point before with them going. Oh, that's the theme of this yeah, movie. Yeah. Felt like. What do you got? What do you got? Like, Not what you think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I had was. a little. I, I'm gonna have to see if that how that sits with me later on. I, I had a slight problem because I fell into like the end of Force Awakens. I could get emotional when I talk about it. What I this little scavenger girl who who believed in the myth of Luke Skywalker is the one standing there with the fate of the galaxy, and I can get worked up because Ray's such a great character. And then when I when I saw that, I was kind of like, so what did I cry for no reason? What's going on? But I got what they're trying to do. It is telling all of us. This isn't going the way you think it is, right then and there. There's, I'm, I'm, I'm talking from my own experience. There is a, um, I did a lot of Star Wars stuff at SNL. Yeah. And I had a, Lauren was like, it's going great. I, I, I'm not, kind of cursed, not really. Um, he said to me once, he goes, it's all great and it's doing really well, like online. He goes, but you know, you don't have to blow Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I remember being taken aback a little bit and essentially what he was going is like, look, I know it's fun for you to be a nerd, but like not everybody loves it. You know what I mean? Like kind of thing. And Lauren is our, my George <laughs> Lucas in a way. Yeah. yeah. And I really, it really, I, I'm not kidding. I wrote it into my phone. I was like, don't blow Star Wars because like, <laughs> It, there, it's true. There I'm is, get a shirt that even says, as a fan, I know when I'm going overboard, and I know, mm. like, I know what I'm doing. But there, I love the idea. It's the, it's the uh, uh, William Shatner sketch from SNL. Yes. Like, you ever kissed a woman? Get over yeah. it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, kind of thing. And there was a little tone of like SmackDown in 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 this movie of just like, yeah, all bit. you nerds who thought we were going into gray Jedi territory, right. and you thought you had it all figured out. And guess what, idiots? Like. Yeah. This guy's dope and he knows what he's doing and he's a fan and right. he's giving you exactly what you want but his version and like I'm I'm fine with that. But uh, I, I, I you, can't wait to see it. Your Lauren Michaels is a great Lauren Michaels mixed with Mark McKinney doing Lauren Michaels and Brain Candy. It's fantastic. Yes, everyone's it's everyone's is different. <laughs> yeah. And ev I'm just bad at impressions. They all no, sound it's, really it's Italian. So, it's it's so bad. It's meta. It's <laughs> um, meta. But actually I want to ask you too, because we you know we got about another five, ten minutes here. Is there anything that you want to cover that really moves you that you love that you wanted to talk about that if you again if you if every single person in the world has seen the star wars so far yeah. and they want to have a conversation with you about well, the, the movie what would you talk about first of all i want to talk about starting luke's journey and ending ending it with a binary sunset yep. that was yeah. like the most beautiful poetic oh my god but i do want to talk about that like force astral projection thing mm -hmm. because it was such like I'm sure in your guys' heads it was like a journey for you because mm -hmm. you're like the moment that you kind of realized something was wrong because he like shows up on Create and you're like, oh, I got a haircut. And he looks a little younger. He's got his dad's lightsaber. That What's just going broke. on? And yeah. then he like goes out there and he lights up the lightsaber. And I'm like, did Ryan Johnson just totally mess up? Like, why does he have the blue one? Like, what's happening here? Um, and then he like comes out and I'm like, okay, Luke is dead. He's dead. He's been dead. This is like a force ghost or whatever. And That's then it cuts back to him just mm -hmm. doing this like, ultimate power of the force oh my god i could not that's like in places of my brain i could not even reach into i could not believe it that was so incredible it was nice to see new force powers i think that's another thing that ryan johnson did he made he there's there's more questions about the force there's more things it does set up like because i know you wanted to talk about broom kid um like that 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 whole thing at the end we, we, we're gonna see i think we're gonna continue to see force users i hope i really want to see more Jedi in the next one. I want to see more Jedi. I want to see more dark side users. And like you said too, though, they might tell me you can see what you can think whatever you want. We're not going to give you exactly that. I think I was getting I was getting excited leading up to the movie about the whole great Jedi thing, and I thought I had figured it out. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I was like, this is the movie where they're going to say that was the last Jedi. The Jedi were these people that did it. It's like. I also, am I crazy? Is it the first time that they have said in canon that it's a, a religion? 
Like physically use the religion. word religion. I, I think, they did in this movie. I think physically, because uh, yeah, in, the movie in Force, Force Awakens, Lor Senteca is a member of the Church of the Force, but that's something that came out in the visual encyclopedias. And yeah, everything. you yeah. have to be one yeah. of us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Know that. exactly. <laughs> Wait, Lor Senteca? Yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, actually. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I think you might be right. That, well, oh, wait, but you know what? Modi says it to Vader, and uh, you're the all that's left of your uh, old yeah. religion. Oh, that's, yeah, right. That's, yeah. Right. that's right. That's right. Well, yeah. that to me was like, and maybe it's just my own opinions about like Catholicism. I brought up Catholic, like you know, Scientology and things like that, right. and where that falls in, in is any of it, right? You know, whatever. But that's a whole other subject. But uh, but. I thought that they were really going to say, like, this is the last Jedi because, like, the Jedis weren't always right. Right. And yeah. the dark side, sometimes they're nice and they have good people in it. And I thought that there was going to become this new thing, this new type of force. And I was, like, all excited for that. So when they didn't, and they essentially went, like, but they kind of did, they went, like, everything you think about this mm -hmm. is not what you thought, but the core thing is we are going to rebuild this world and our America. Like, it felt yeah, yeah. very... The last five minutes felt like a a it felt like a Star Wars movie and then a thirty second Twitter commercial that was Star Wars themed. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Like you know it's what I mean? Like Where a, it's like, hey, it's a Disney shooting Guess what? star to go. We all Disney hope fight. and we all do yeah. this and we teach and we do this. You can get Broom Kid. You get Broom Kid. Yeah. Yeah. Who is a thousand percent gonna have a series <laughs> grown up <laughs> grown up. That Master will come Broom back. Kid. That right. will come back. Master I have Broom no Broom. doubt in I, my I, mind that yeah. that kid will be the oh, lead absolutely. of Good Lee Ezra on some other thing soon. <laughs> yeah, I think you're actually, and we, we could talk about else, we could do an entire, entire hour on the Force. I think you're right. I think that's what the message was, was, I mean, Luke says it, there's always been a joke as a Star Wars fan, like the Jedi kind of were arrogant bastards yeah. who did some bad things. Um, they never got it right. Yeah, not once. They, they, no, he's dead right. now. Uh, yeah, and, and Lucas kind of has this distrust of large organizations and unions and religions and governments. So all that's there, and I, I it, it is, I think, a parallel to kind of what is going on now with the not that Ryan Johnson set out to do that, but this a new generation going. You, thanks for what you did before. We're going to improve on it and yeah. go forward. I, it I seems think right. like we're in a time where people are becoming more aware of everything and to be accountable for everything. Yeah. And this movie felt like the first movie that was like, we have to change the way we think, mm -hmm. not only in the Star Wars universe, but in real life also. And mm -hmm. like, it wasn't so heavy handed, though. It was done right. in a very amazing. Yeah, the only, the only heavy handed way. thing was the PETA stuff. In, uh, in, in uh, Canto Bite. That was, that, was, that was the only stuff that yeah. was a bit over the head. But red paint all over your body. Oh, um, <laughs> you and I can talk later. Um, but also, and I want to see it again because I was so confused, the, the, the Yoda scene. Uh, yeah. That was, yeah, so that's... I was My still... first thought was, yay, it's a puppet. My second thought was, it looks exactly like my daughter. Um, <laughs> I can't explain it. They have the same, she has the same face as that puppet. I can't, the new, like, I think it was a new well, puppet. The, fir the first, the beginning of it was, and then it went into Empire Puppet. Because it's like, you notice when you first see him. But the, meaning, no, did they shoot a brand new puppet, and is it Frank I, doing I, I thought it was the actual Empire puppet, wasn't yeah. it? I, I, that I don't, I don't know. know. It yeah. looks a little, okay. it looks a tiny bit wonky, but it grows yeah. on you. It does. Right? I want, now I want to meet your daughter because she seems very I'll wise. I'll show you a picture. It's no joke. <laughs> yeah. She looks almost exactly <laughs> yeah. like that That's puppet. Um, she's adorable, but and she doesn't have ears like that. But uh, <laughs> also, I need to go see that scene again because I was so wrapped up in the new Yoda that I yeah. kind of didn't hear everything and whatever. Right. And it a little tiny bit felt like Yoda going, eh, we didn't do it. Let's just burn it all down. <laughs> right, man? Hey. We tried, buddy. Like, yeah. And I was but, like, but that's you, a weird Well, that's a great thing that you said that. So maybe you didn't pick this up the first time because some people did, some people didn't. You know that Ray stole all the books, right? She what? The Jedi books. Ray took all the books. Oh, I did See? not notice that. Nobody no. picked it up the first time. So that's why Yoda blew it up because he knew the books weren't in there. Ray at the very so at the very end, Finn watch at the wa yeah watch at the end when you yeah. see it I'm again. Finn pulls out to get that code in the Falcon, and all the books are laid out, and they're there. Because she's training to be training. the Jedi. Because she's wow. going to be the one. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. why Yoda was able to. That's why he was. He was. And I definitely think we're going to find out in nine that she's Luke's daughter. Maybe, mm. maybe she's Luke's, Luke's daughter? daughter. Maybe Luke. Maybe wow. that's Luke and oh. someone else. Mm. Well, okay. interesting. I don't know. Huh. Going to be interesting. Yeah. Final I don't know. Thought. I'm just trying to think of how they're going to continue the Skywalker. Continue the lay. I mean, how they're going to continue her in these movies. Yeah. The only way that yeah. they can. 
the why I don't think your initial theory with uh, Han and Leia turning out to be her parents. The only way, and, I, and I've said this, and I still don't think, I still think she's her maybe parents. Maybe not Han and Leia, but maybe I think they can, they, I think they won't do it. But, but I'll tell you why. I think they did yeah. leave themselves a just in case. Yeah, no, but that Han and Leia thing, there's, a, there's still that shot that is never really explained where you could just say it's maybe just in passing, but they could explain it in episode seven when she's talking about seeing the green for the first time mm -hmm. and Han has this look on his face like he feels guilty. And it's like that was the only time I said, well, maybe they're going to reveal something. I still think that her parents are nobody. Nobody. I think that that was the point of the whole movie, but you never know. Rank or keeper, size noodles. <laughs> size <laughs> noodles. Um, yeah. Now, the final moment. I have final a good moment. authority, Ash, that there there was reshoots in episode eight, and that was after Porg Nation began, you became the poster child. I ab absolutely believe Ryan Johnson, at Pablo Hidalgo's orders, went back and added that shot of Chewbacca almost eating the pork just for you. I really think that's Okay, so I was sitting two rows behind you. Uh, Did yeah. you hear me? I heard you yell, no! I went, no! <laughs> um, for two reasons. One, we don't eat porgs, and two, I'm gonna have to deactivate all my social media. I'm done after this. This is it. <laughs> you're gonna this get is so, it. You're gonna get, once, that, once the images are allowed to be shared, you're gonna get so many memes of oh, that fried pork. Oh my god! Pork. I love that scene so much. I want to know when they added it. I loved it. I People are already tweeting me about it constantly. I can't believe he didn't take a bite. I can't. He might as well. He, he, he already killed it. That's what I mean. He, he already killed, killed it. Just go for it done. at this point. The damage was already done. He felt guilty about it, which is amazing. Even just a. It's just something. You know, I don't have any sources on this, but I am a hundred percent sure that that was added later. Afterwards. All right, let's go. Um, so as we wrap up here, Ash, give me your favorite favorite moment of the entire movie. It, it's it's Luke's final moment with the sunsets. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Final uh, favorite moment in the entire film. Favorite sequence. Mm. Uh, it might for me. It might be the the the, the Leia scene. The Leia it might scene. Be the Leia wow. scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I also, uh, the Leia scene, to me, my main takeaway, my two favorite things, Leia scene and Paige, the uh, sister. Oh, yes. Of Rose. That was a great moment. Yes. Great. Uh, just, uh, yeah, it was a great yeah, moment. Just beautiful, really so well done, like a war movie, like yeah. you felt yeah. it. Yep. World War II, like a Memphis Belle. Style. How many yeah. times have we seen the thing where it's like, I can't reach the button, but and then you reach, but it still was so But great. even when it dropped, the way, the way that it was shot, Everything I thought for it, a thought second, great. I thought for a second she was going to get it. Yeah. A, Real, just tough, gritty, like gotta yep. get it done, yep. like and and which helped every. It made her story every single time. She was like, w "We have to keep going." You were like, "Yeah," because she's fighting the fight. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I really was, enjoyed that. Yeah. Those two sisters, and I, I hope we see a lot more yeah. of those characters. I was uh, for me, it's the throne room because throne I think room. the way. Oh it, yeah, because yeah, not was not amazing. only I think it's one of the most <laughs> iconic scenes in in Star Wars. I think that because. Not only the way that it was shot and the lighting of it, and and how Stoke really seemed like he was gonna get the one up on everybody, and and then they looked like they were gonna go, oh no, they're gonna do, they're gonna pull a, we've turned him to the light side. Now what are they gonna do? He was never gonna the light side. He was always gonna crave the power, even though he might not want to be a Sith. He still is following the dark side rules. So I thought that was all executed very well. Yeah, I I can't wait to see it again and watch it again because I want to enjoy it because I spent too much of the time going. When is he going to reconnect? I thought Snoke yeah. was just going to be like, <laughs> oh yeah, 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 <laughs> and just yeah. be like, you know, I which that. isn't out of the like, question. There's like, no way they yeah. couldn't. Like, I thought they. Were, I was like, there's like, no way yeah. they killed this amazing and character. And see his face, I spent a lot of time out. going. Did I figure it out? When <laughs> I gotta go it. watch it for fun yeah. instead of. Uh, for for me, the, the long term one might be Luke Skywalker's final moments because it's it's go him going out on his own terms. But I gotta tell you, uh, two seen it two times now. The both times the audience had the same reaction, and that is when oh. Amilin Holdo yep. takes the ships through high Oh, yeah. And yeah. there was something powerfully, bittersweetly beautiful and aching mm -hmm. in that moment. And both times the, the crowd audibly went, <gasps> yep. and just the silence, the sound design, a perfect Star Wars moment yep. for me. That's it. That's our spoiler talk here, too. It's a little impromptu. There's other ones on the channel that you can find, but this is the take where you get to hear Bobby Moynihan and Ashley Crossan give their thoughts on The Last Jedi. It is out in theaters right now. Make sure that you guys go check it out. Come back. Well, obviously, you've probably seen it if you click this video, but leave your thoughts and your theories in the comments section. Check out all the great stuff that we have here on the channel as we are still in The Last Jedi hype. Enjoy it. May the Force be with you. Always. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.